is asking, uh, is it true that we should not blow out candles? What's the proper way to put out the candle of Abdullah? Ah, very, very good question. Yes, it is true. Rav Mutsafi Shikhye said that there is a very dear mistake that people make with their Abdullah candles, where they take the Abdullah candle that's lit and they, uh, uh, they uh, put it out with the uh, wine that they just drank from the, from the Abdullah. They take some of the wine and they pour it in a plate. And then they uh, turn off the candle with that. Rav Mutsapi, which is one of the Gdolei Adol, one of the Talmidim Muvakim of Rav Tzion uh, Abba Shaul, he said this is desecration of the wine. Desecration of the wine, of the Kiddush wine that you just blessed. Now you're using it to, uh, to, to uh, turn off candles. It's completely a, a desecration of the wine. It's not a good way to, to do things. Now, as the same token, Blowing out the uh, candle with uh, with air is uh, also not uh, not appropriate. So what do you do? Best thing to do: clap, clap on top of the uh, wine. If you have kids, this is very entertaining. You can have everybody clap from wherever they are. They are not everybody come on top of the fire because that could you know somebody could hit the actual candle. But you have this is what we do in our home. Our custom is everybody sits in their seats. My little kids, my wife Baruch Hashem, and Abdullah comes after a nice little ceremony. A, a little bit of uh, 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 blessings and song and so on. We uh, get to the part of the candle and you know we clap. We clap. I obviously am on top of the candle. I clap on top of the candle. We keep clapping until the uh, cl- uh, the uh, the candle is out. And then I tell the kids, "You did it. You did it." And you know everybody argues about who actually turn off the candles. And that's it. It's a fun little thing. But nonetheless, that's the best way to do it. That's the best way to do it. And not to blow out the candle with air. It's not a birthday cake. Uh, not that that's our custom anyway. Uh, and not to uh, 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 burn out, to, to turn off the candles with the wine, which is a desecration of the wine. To turn off the uh, fire of the Abdallah candle with a uh, clapping of some kind. That's the best way. As far as the candles of Shabbat or candles of Hanukkah, you just let them burn out, meaning they use up all the oil, all the wax, the candle, whatever you're using, uh, until they burn out. Simple. Until they burn out, that's, a, that's what you got to do. Uh, that's it. There's really no other candles you need to turn off. Uh, what is the importance of Melave Malka after Shabbat dinner, and is it customary in our days? Uh, Melave Malka is, uh, is the fourth meal. It's the fourth meal that comes after Shabbat. Why, where is this Melave Malka come from? The, uh, the uh, Chachamim teach us that uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu came to David Melech and told him, your time is uh, going to come and uh, you're going to die on a Shabbat. You're going to die on a Shabbat. And David Melech cried to Kadosh Baruch Hu and said, why? Why would I want to die on Shabbat? Please don't take me on Shabbat because uh, I'll be mukze. You know, I'll be, uh, you know, they'll have to wait and this. Why don't you just take me on a Friday? Take me on a Friday before Shabbat. Which, by the way, there's a very big ma'ala for somebody to die on Friday because someone who dies on Friday and is buried on Friday before Shabbat, they, uh, they, they, and if they were righteous, which usually this is what happens to righteous people, uh, not always, but nonetheless, it's a special gift from Shemaim. Uh, for people that do certain things during their whole life, Hashem takes them on Friday and has people bury them on Friday before Shabbat. Uh, this eliminates the whole uh, chibuta kever. They skip chibuta kever. Uh, so that's that's a very big thing. So so David the Melech wanted to die on Friday, but Hashem says no, I can't because your uh, Torah is so valuable to me that if I take you on Friday, that means that you're going to study one less day in the world of Torah. And your Torah is worth more than all the sacrifices that your son Shlomo HaMelech is ever going to give me. You know, so that's how valuable your Torah is. So David David HaMelech said, okay, so take me on Sunday. Hashem says, I'm sorry, I can't do that either. Why? Because I was already decreed when your kinghood will begin and when it will end and when your son's kinghood will begin and when it will end. Already decreed. If you die on Sunday, that means that your kinghood will continue for an extra day, and your son will be one less day. That cannot be. That's not, the world of a Baruch Hu is very precise. 
So the Vida Melech was less, said, okay, so, you know, the only thing I can do is to uh, make sure the Satan stays away from me on Shabbat. When is, how can I protect myself from the Satan? Satan cannot touch me if I'm studying Torah. Cannot touch me if I'm studying Torah. That's why it says in the uh, Tan, uh, in a um, Midrash Rabba, uh, in the uh, book of Deuteronomy, the last chapter, uh, in Midrash Rabba, or uh, you go into Avot uh, Rabbi Natan, also talks about the death of, of, uh, of Moshe Rabbeinu, the Satan, Hashem, wanted to appease Moshe Rabbeinu and send him to Satan. Go, go take Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama. And uh, the Satan came to Moshe Rabbeinu while he's learning Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu looks at the Satan and says, what do you want? And the Satan says to him, I came here to take your neshama. Moshe Rabbeinu rebukes him because you chutzpan. You obnoxious person, you have the nerve to even come next to me when I'm learning Torah. And not only that, have the chutzpah to think you could take my neshama. Get out of here. And he scared him away because he had a uh, Moshe Rabbeinu who had the staff with the name of a Kadosh Baruch Hu on it. It was a uh, uh, something uh, out of this world, if you will. And uh, Hashem kept sending the Satan back to Moshe Rabbeinu to appease him, to show him how much he loves him, that even the Satan can't take him. So at uh, the last time the Satan came, Moshe Rabbeinu got so upset with him, he started hitting him and he t- took out his, uh, some of his eyes, some of the Satan's eyes to the point where Satan ran away, completely didn't come back. And then uh, eventually at Kadosh Baruch Hu, after a, a whole dialogue that's discussed in the Midrash Rabbah, uh, back and forth, eventually Hashem uh, took uh, Moshe Rabbeinu's neshama himself. Uh, but uh, the, with, the, with David HaMelech, David HaMelech also knew that just like Moshe Rabbeinu, Satan can't touch him. Can't touch him if he's learning Torah. So every Shabbat, David HaMelech would study the whole time, non-stop Torah. Non-stop Torah, Torah, praying Torah, Torah, praying Torah, never go to sleep. So Satan, why it was time to, to take the uh, David Melech, but how could I take him if he's learning Torah? I can't touch him. He's fire. He's spiritual fire. So what did Satan do? The Satan made a, a big ruckus outside on a tree outside while, uh, you know, making noise. So David Melech got up and went to check who was outside. And as soon as he got up and he started going down the stairs, his, his mind got off the Torah. For a moment, and at that moment, the Satan took away uh, one of the steps and took his neshama. So the Chachamim asked, if David Melech was so righteous that he learned Torah non-stop, how could the Satan even get him off of his learning Torah by simply making noise outside? What, every time there was noise outside, David Melech got up to see what is going on? No. David Melech was Kodesh Kodeshim. Why did David Melech go outside get up because he heard someone uh breaking a tree so he thought someone is desecrating shabbat so he went outside to go rebuke them but even though he was on the way to go rebuke them his mind escaped the torah for a moment and that's the only moment that satan needed to take his neshama so now what does this have all to do with belavim alka this was a whole process until the uh the satan succeeded every shabbat David Melech, if he survived the Shabbat, when he survived the Shabbat, he would celebrate. How would he celebrate that he survived the Shabbat? Because he knew he had to die on Shabbat, not on Motzei Shabbat, on Shabbat itself. So as long if, as soon as he survived the whole Shabbat, he celebrated. And what did he celebrate with? A big festive meal, Melave Malka, Melave Malka. And for that, we uh, it became a custom among Am Israel. To have a fourth meal to celebrate to celebrate the uh, the Shabbat and continue the celebration of Shabbat that we survived that David Melech survived is a uh, is is going to come that uh, Mashiach uh, 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 the uh, 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 Ben Yosef is going to survive and, and so on and so forth so there's a lot of meaning to it but nonetheless it started the source of it is David Melech celebrating that he survived the Shabbat. But we continue it already for three thousand years in the uh, in, uh, in the same concept. That's Melavim Malka. Good question.